Hello, students and friends. Today's topic concerns one of the pieces of evidence that proves light and all electromagnetic waves also behave like a particle. So just relax, watch, and learn. And who is this man who discovered this science breakthrough and won for himself the prestigious Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921? Of course, that's no other than Albert Einstein, whose popularity is associated to the famous equation E equals mc squared. But wait, he won a Nobel Prize not because of his E equals mc squared idea, but because of his discovery of the photoelectric effect phenomenon. So what is this photoelectric effect? Basically, the photoelectric effect is the ejecting of electrons from a metal by shining light of a particular frequency on it. It doesn't work for all wavelengths or frequencies. Einstein's idea about the particle nature of light and all other electromagnetic waves is just actually uh, a follow-up to what a fellow scientist by the name of Max Planck had earlier discovered. Max Planck, all right, considered light to be composed of units of what they call quantize, meaning discrete amount of energy, okay, and they call this units of quantize or discrete amount of energy as photons. So, the proponents of the particle nature of light, okay, put forward this uh, equation that relates the energy or the photon energy denoted here by capital E okay, in terms of the product of the frequency of light and a constant each known as Planck's constant. All right? And since frequency can also be expressed as the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum divided by the wavelength lambda, okay, the energy of a photon can also be the product of the constant, Planck's constant each multiplied by speed of light in vacuum divided by lambda or the wavelength. All right? So the meaning of each quantity in this equation is given here. The value for the, ma for the Planck's constant each, all right? You can choose between the SI uh, unit, which is 6.626 .6 raised to the negative 34 joules second, or what is more commonly used because most uh, scientists consider this as more convenient, and that is equal to 4.136 times 10 to the negative 15 electron volts second.
For the value of the speed of light in vacuum, we suggest that we will consider the value to three significant figures, that is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. To understand the photoelectric effect phenomenon, all right, let's look at this diagram which shows an apparatus for studying the photoelectric effect, all right? So we have here a vacuum chamber, right? Uh, inside the vacuum chamber, there is this metal surface uh, on which light, a monochromatic light, will be incident on, okay? And uh, given the correct frequency of light, right, the electrons that will be ejected will be uh, repelled because this metal okay, happens to be connected to the negative terminal of a battery. In other words, uh, the, vac the vacuum chamber is connected right, to an external uh, circuit and there is a uh, battery. All right? So when these uh, ejected electrons all right, move to what we call here as the, uh, the anode, if this is the cathode, then this is the anode, all right, which serves as the detector. So the amount of electrons, all right, per unit of time, which of course we know is the current, can be measured by this device known as the ammeter. All right. So uh, given the uh, amount of voltage, all right, and also the current, they're able to uh, analyze uh, some properties of this phenomenon, the photoelectric effect, and these are the results. Number one, uh, the photocurrent, meaning uh, the ejected electrons, right, when light strikes this uh, metal surface okay with the right amount of frequency there are electrons that will be ejected and this uh, amount of uh, electrons per unit time usually referred to as the photocurrent and this photocurrent depends on the light frequency right if the light frequency happens to be less than okay, what we call the threshold frequency of the metal surface. There will be no electrons that will be ejected. That's the first observation. Then there is another one. There is no time delay between when the light is turned on and when the cathode emits photoelectrons, all right? Assuming, of course, that the light frequency f is greater than the threshold frequency of the metal surface, all right? This happens no matter how faint the light is. In other words, it doesn't matter uh, what the intensity of the light is, okay? There will there will be what we call uh, photoelectrons, okay, or electrons ejected, okay, immediately when light hits the metal surface. There is no time delay for as long as the frequency of the light is greater than the threshold 
frequency, regardless of the intensity of the light. And the third observation, the stopping potential, okay, in other words, there is a certain voltage, all right, there is a certain voltage that can be uh, controlled. The, they call this the stopping potential. And this stopping potential, okay, does not depend on intensity, but does depend on frequency. Again, the stopping potential is the amount of voltage, okay, uh, that can be controlled or that can be regulated, all right, to uh, stop the electrons from moving around the circuit, okay? We call it the stopping potential. And it does not depend on the intensity of the light, but it does depend on frequency. All right, so considering the previous observations from that uh, experiment on the photoelectric effect, we can now talk about what they call the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons, labeled here as capital K, and come up with this equation, all right? Uh, an equation that relates the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons okay, is related to what we call the stopping voltage, all right, as well as the frequency of the light that is hitting the metal surface and a quantity denoted by the Greek letter phi. All right, so this quantity, phi, is called the work function. All right, work function. Uh, earlier, it was mentioned that uh, the ejection of electrons depends on a certain frequency. All right, we call it the threshold frequency. No electrons can be ejected all right, no matter how intense the incident light is, if the threshold frequency is not what we call overcome, all right, because there is, there is an amount of energy, also known as the work function, that is, uh, or that has to be overcome, all right, by the incident light in order for the electrons in the metal surface to be ejected, all right? So, this amount of kinetic energy is just equal to the, what we call the uh, product, all right, of uh, Planck's constant H and the frequency F. All right. If you're going to uh, get the difference between the photon energy, HF, okay, if HF, if you get the difference between HF minus the work function, then you are getting what you call the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons, right? Uh, the quantity B of naught, all right, is what we call the stopping potential earlier introduced. All right, so we have here the meaning of each quantity in this equation, okay? Uh, the quantity labeled as E refers to the magnitude of the electron charge, right? This of not, of course, is the stopping potential, 
each F means the energy of the absorbed photon. And the symbol phi refers to the work function, which is the minimum energy needed to eject an electron. All right. Question number one. A certain metal has a work function of 4.5 electron volts. For this metal, find letter A, the minimum frequency that light must have to produce photoelectrons, and letter B, the frequency that light must have to produce photoelectrons with maximum kinetic energy 1.53 electron volts. Okay, our solution, given the work function denoted by the Greek letter phi, which is equal to 4.5 electron volts. And we are asked to find for both questions A and B, all right? Uh, in letter A, we are looking for the minimum frequency. F. And for letter B, also the frequency that light must have to produce uh, photoelectrons but with maximum kinetic energy given as 1.53 electron volts. Alright, so our formula for letter A, finding the minimum frequency, we just divide the work function by the value of max of Planck's constant H. That is 4.5 electron volts divided by 4.136 times 10 to the negative 15 electron volts second. Take note, this is the value for the Planck's constant that we choose here because our uh, what you call work function is already expressed in electron volts. Right? Notice that this unit, electron volts, will just be cancelled. And as expected, our answer is expressed in the unit hertz, or that is the same as per second. Okay? So dividing 4.5 by 4.136 raised to the negative 15 electron volt, this is what we get. 1.1 1 .1, uh, raised to the 15 power hertz to two significant figures. All right? So that's the answer to letter A. Now for letter B, all right? For letter B, we also going to find the frequency given the maximum kinetic energy. So based on this original formula we presented earlier, right, that the maximum kinetic energy is just equal to the difference between the photon energy HF and the work function. Okay, isolating the uh, quantity F that will become uh, F equals K, or maximum kinetic energy, plus the work function phi all over Planck's constant H. And substituting, all right, 1.53 electron volts, that's the value for the maximum kinetic energy, K plus, uh, the work function that's also given 4.5 electron volts. So when you add them and then divide them by Planck's constant, doing our math, what we get is a frequency equal to 1.5 times 10 to the 15 hertz.
Question number two. Silicon films become better electrical conductors when illuminated by photons with energies of 1.14 electron volts or greater, an effect called photoconductivity. Question is, which of the following wavelengths of electromagnetic radiations can cause photoconductivity in silicon films? Here are the choices. Number one, ultraviolet light whose wavelength is equal to 300 nanometers. Okay. Uh, number two, option number two, red light whose wavelength lambda is equal to 600 nanometers. And option number three, infrared light with a wavelength lambda equals 1,000. 200 nanometers okay we are looking for one or more answers so our solution we use the formula that relates uh, lambda or the wavelength of the light and what we call the photon energy capital E right uh, the symbols H or Planck's constant as well as small letter C, speed of light, and vacuum, these are both constant, universal constants. Right? So, very clearly, we see the inverse relationship between the wavelength, lambda, and the photon energy, capital E. So, uh, we will calculate for the wavelength given the uh, amount of energy. This is the minimum amount of energy in electron volts. All right, 1.14. So, when you substitute the values for the Planck's constant, and then the speed of light, multiply them, all right? Um, divide them by what we call the photon energy minimum, photon energy given, 1.14 electron volts. Doing our math, we will get the value for lambda equal to 1.09 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. All right, so in our calculation here, uh, the unit electron volts would cancel out as well as the unit second. So what is left in our computation for lambda is just the unit meter as expected. All right. When changed to nanometers, this is the equivalent, 1,090 nanometers. All right. Now, how do we interpret this lambda for us to be able to answer the question, which is uh, asking for uh, the wavelengths all right, that can produce or cause photoconductivity in silicon films. All right, so as mentioned earlier, uh, the photon energy that we use in this computation is considered the minimum photon energy, 1.14 electron volts. All right, so that means that the wavelength of uh, the EM wave that came out in our calculation is considered the maximum because we said that lambda is inversely proportional to energy. So if the energy used in the computation is the minimum, all right, minimum photon energy, the corresponding lambda that we calculated refers to the maximum 
uh, wavelength of the electromagnetic wave. And therefore, our answer to the question is only uh, number one, ultraviolet light whose wavelength is equal to 300 nanometers and also number two, red light whose wavelength is 600 nanometers. So both uh, electromagnetic waves have their wavelengths lower or less than what you calculated here as lambda or maximum lambda, 1,090 nanometers. Okay? Uh, infrared light with a wavelength of 1,200 nanometers happens to be greater right, than the maximum. So, it will not cause photoconductivity in the uh, in silicon films. Only these two okay, will cause photoconductivity in silicon films. So the concept is uh, applying the relationship between the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave and the amount of photon energy. Okay, they are inversely proportional. Our last question, number three. In a photoelectric effect experiment, the stopping potential is 1.37 electron volts if the light used to illuminate the cathode has wavelength 475 nanometers. Question is, find letter A, the work function in electron volts, the cathode material, and let there be the stopping potential if the wavelength is decreased to 425 nanometers. Our solution, all right, we first identify that the given stopping potential is 1.37 electron volts and that the uh, wavelength of the the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave, lambda, equals 475 nanometers, right? So, uh, if you're going to determine the uh, frequency of this EM wave, given that the speed of light is 3.00 raised to the 8th power meter per second, Dividing it by the uh, wavelength already converted in meters, then we will get the frequency of the EM wave that is 6.32 times 10 to the 14 power hertz. And answering the first question, letter E, where we are asked to find the work function or uh, the symbol phi, all right? We will use, of course, the formula. Work function is equal to the photon energy HF minus the stopping potential, B0. Substituting, okay, for the work function phi, we have Planck's constant expressed in electron volt second, multiplied by the calculated frequency f, all right, 6.32 raised to the 14th per second. And then, after multiplying them, we will subtract uh, the stopping potential, 1.37 electron volts. So doing our math, we will get, as our answer to letter E, the work function P, all right, which is 
1.24 electron volts. All right, so just like in letter A, we'll just apply the same procedure, but this time uh, the wavelength lambda has been decreased to 425 nanometers. And this has a corresponding frequency which can be determined by dividing the speed of light, okay, and this wavelength but express in meters. All right, so doing our math, we will get the frequency equal to 7.06 raised to the 14 power hertz. So just like in question letter A, we're also going to uh, use the basic formula, but this time, all right, uh, the value of the frequency, of course, is the one that we just calculated, but you will be using the same work function phi, substituting, right, Planck's constant and this calculated frequency. Then, after multiplying them, we will subtract the work function 1.34 electron volts. Again, doing our math, okay, we will arrive at the value for the stopping voltage or potential equal to 1.68 electron volts. That's it. Thank you very much for your indulgence. Thank you very much for watching. Please follow me in my FB page and please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.